On today's episode, join us in Kazakhstan, where we discover the origins of undefeated welterweight Shavkat Rachmanov. What do you know? People will be more to know who are the Kazakhs, who are their character, who are their fighters, in principle. Here, TJ Dillashaw break down his signature moves. Garbrandt was coming at me. I'd step off to my left, kept my left hand high, because I knew he was going to throw the right hand at the same time, and beat him to the punch at a better angle. His eyes roll back in the back of his head as soon as I landed it, being on the button. And see how Bryce Mitchell is using his platform to change lives in his hometown. Half of my fight purse, $45,000 is going to Arkansas children with medical conditions who have no hope. We will be their hope. Shavkat Rachmanov has wowed fans and fighters alike with his astounding 100% finish rate. The 16-0 welterweight is the first Kazakhstani to sign with the UFC and proudly represents the Asian country on the world stage. Hailing from a long line of warriors, Nomad aims to honor them every time he steps into the octagon. We learn more about Shavkat's journey in Origins. Proudly carrying the Kazakhstan flag is Shavkat Rachmanov. He has arrived as a welterweight contender. Hey, this dude's a killer. I mean, this dude's an absolute killer. This man can fight you anywhere you want it to be. This kid's an impressive man. You see a guy that truly has potential to be something very special in the welterweight division. Shavkat Nomad Rachmanov! Kazakhstan is от других стран свое равно очень дружелюбнее и всегда ради что гостей встречать и очень такие терские пацаны просто не хочу сейчас хвастаться хвастаться своими там редкими но они были не простые люди цепные как бы кочевники всегда кочевали как бы очень воинственный народ казах всегда у нас Казахи вообще синили свои батыров и аханов. Они всегда любили их, в принципе. Свои батыры, всех батыров всегда вспоминают. И они гордятся, в принципе. Да. Но так, для нас это как бы это культура, это наша как бы. Для нас это большое значение, мы это бьем. Рабачили или где-то там по деревьям волатили, фрукты там. Там соседним улицам любили папу. Мальчишки собираемся и все играли, так чувствуют всегда. Братья меня старше заставляли почему-то драться. Так. У нас ну, ты вот так спрашивал, ты будешь с ним драться? Я там, я никогда не отказывал. Да, говорил всегда. Вот все начался потом махать, так, так, так. Тоже редко всех почти выигрывал. Только кто меня выигрывал, они были намного мне старше. Он у меня сразу понравился, я с детства любил, в принципе, так. А я действовал, вот как как-то на базар ходил. У нас все бойцы. Что увидел там? Вот, раньше был DVD диски, и там начал начался бои там клетка там. Как раз там тогда было Прайт, UFC. Интересно, Федор Емельяненко был тогда очень крупная звезда была тогда. И Мир как Рокот очень тоже сильно нравился, как, какой он ударный был, высококлассный. Потом уже когда ты сам все это, вот это по ИПС правильно, там, там типа самые сильные люди, типа, не знаю, чувствовал, что почему-то ты вырос, ты такой же спортсменом стану. Начал когда самбо, самбо заниматься, он когда наш тренер. Начали. Стало, так я уже полностью ему мог пришел. Я другим соревнованиям вообще не уступал. Любит так выступать. Надо молодым ребятам дать шанс, в принципе, так. Вот сейчас выиграл. И все. Оттуда начался потом потихонечку карьера. Цели поставить, я когда выступал организатор М1, скорее всего, быстрее забрать поезд был. В принципе, я его забрал и защитил, и попал в UFC, и все. Задача. The first fighter 
to sign with the UFC out of Kazakhstan. Still undefeated, Shavkat Rachmanov makes his debut tonight. Первый бой мне приходил с бразильским кобоем Алекс Алгейра был. Он был ветераном, можно сказать, и все. Он очень много боев проводил. This young man believes fully in his ability to compete with the best in his division. Oh, and a big knee to the body from Rachmanov. Oh, guillotine attempt, John. Oh, it's deep. Oh, wow. He's got a great guillotine. There's the tap. Remember the name, Shavkat Rachmanov, with a huge win in his debut. И потом второй бой тоже. Никогда второй соперник мечел прозерец получается. Он тоже никогда то срочно не проигрывал, в принципе там. Всегда он тикдауна делал с своим соперником. Ничего не смог тоже сделать. Oh, step in the knee for Rachmanov. He's got weapons everywhere. That's what makes him so dangerous. Oh, he's got it under the neck. There's the top. Wow, man. Wow. Shavkat Rachmanov still undefeated. You're not going to find a brighter prospect in the welterweight division right now. He is 14-0 with 14 finishes. A lot of hype around Shavkat right now. Obviously, when you're undefeated and they're all finishes, that's going to happen. Oh! oh! Spin kick sets him down. Oh! 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 And that's going to do it! Another one! I'm going to the 15th boy. And then the 4th boy was free. Мегни был свободно, он как напрещал, давайте, кого угодно меня дайте, дайте. Я говорю, давай, сюда иди, короче, со мной я тебе покажу, что такое. Эй, мума. И все. Для меня было, наконец-то, серьезно. Один из серьезных соперников, потому что у него имя было. Он всегда пытался топом и всегда был топух. Позиция была. Sinks back into it with short time. There's a turn! Wow! Still undefeated! and still has finished every single fight. Очень крутая, в принципе, так. Это просто казахстанский национальный традиционный как бы баллонный бар, томах называется. Ну, звери можно, звери можно, шкуру сделаны, можно сказать, вот так. Просто хотел показать, что тоже у нас есть баллонный бар, но она, в принципе, как бы показать, что ну, казахстанский баллонный бар, наша культура какой-то часть там. Что узнал в мире? Люди будут больше узнавать, кто такие казахи, какие у них характер, какие они бойцы, в принципе. В принципе, как бы показать, что ну, казахстанский головной убор, наша культура какой-то часть там. Наши как бы, предки там. Кочевники всегда очень хорошо воевали. Они могли просто седло сидеть и соперника получается как бы врагу попасть, но, можно сказать, даже сердце могли точно попасть, потому что они метки были стрелкам из лука. Для казахов, конечно, это лошадь была одним из самых любимых животных, потому что всегда другими делами. Как свою карьеру закончил, и буду и часто ездить на лошадях. Любому иностранцу надо приехать и конечно попробовать надо. <смех> Мне кажется, вот он. Любому тури... У нас туризм только начинает развиваться, в принципе. Люди дома больше будут узнавать. Мы вот спортсмены и как... Я шоу, малейкум. Ага, что урашивается? Вот сюда. Что же мы нам делаем? Карсов? Есть Карсов. Ближе к мясу, ты что? Да, не туда все же отошел. Можно, да, мне? Можно, можно, конечно. Мы находимся сейчас в предгорье Залисского Латал. Место называется Тавасу. Это вот как раз таки, где в основном горы, везде. Здесь по чистый воздух. И вот юрта, это национальная как бы наша... Достояние, то, что э, наши предки раньше жили в таких юртах, принимали гостей. Я думаю, шавхат, э, секрет шафата отчасти есть и в этом, что он есть кумы, а пьет кумыс и ест канину, да? канину. Кто не кушал канин? Главным блюдом всегда является бешвамах, где мясо. Здесь канина получается. Джаун джая. Также молоко кумыс. Я думаю, это вот секрет всех сильных казахов. 
покушали казахский, ну, можно сказать, национальный напиток, мульти, это тоже. В основном гости куда ехать, едет сюда, что там, не, не знаю, все разные, кто-то кому-то первый раз понравится, кому-то там два-три раза уже кушает, кушает, уже привыкает и начинает нравиться, там, чувствует, что это очень вкусно и все. Здесь вот э, наш старший мой тренер личный, Баян Джангал. Вот, мясо красиво он самый дерзко нарезает. Никто так мы не умеем, в принципе, так, так и она есть. Каждый народ поймет, что это кочевник, что наш народ, они были кочевниками, вели кочевой образ жизни. Но это, опять же, часть нашей истории, часть нашей культуры, и поэтому вот, и мы стараемся быть достойными своих предков. Я, получается, меня кто в UFC первый подписали. Из мужчин я кто первый победу одержал, получается, в UFC. Потому что для меня это честь, я просто не просто так выступаю. Это не всем дано, чтобы быть чемпионом или это какие-то там, не знаю, как-то как это, крови может быть что-то. Oh, Потому что генетики это казахская. У меня Бог не, не просто так дал что-то такое характер. Пока у меня есть собой, у меня есть желание, я буду выступать и добиться успеха, и забрать поезд быстрее. И все. Oh! Надеюсь, уже скоро будет у нас Казахстан поезд. Для этого я здесь. TJ Dillashaw's unique and unrivaled skill set makes him a UFC must-watch. Building on an NCAA Division I wrestling background, Dillashaw added highlight reel knockouts to his skill set after teaming up with Muay Thai guru Dwayne Ludwig. The former bantamweight champ breaks down some of his most devastating techniques in Signature Series. My fighting style, it's very unorthodox. This kid is something special. It's the way he moves. And has evolved over the years of uh, me being an MMA fighter. Starting out as a wrestler. Dillashaw just very impressed with his grappling skills. Learning to use that wrestling to my advantage of be becoming a striker. He looks like a pro kickboxer and he comes from a wrestling background. Dillashaw has changed his style to bang Muay Thai. When Dwayne Ludwig became my head coach, it really developed my striking to be comfortable and be able to fight in both stances. Nice, which is good pulls. We kind of broke the mold when we started creating the movement we did. TJ's movement is excellent under the tutelage of Bang Ludwig. Another right hand, he clipped him again. Oh, that's it! Dillashaw, just a different level, man. I'm TJ Dillashaw, and this is my signature series. First move, the switch. When I say the switch, it is switching from one stance to the next. If I'm an orthodox stance, my right leg is back, my right hand is back. You hit your feet and switch really fast. Use that momentum of coming forward and switch to southpaw. I'm using it to get a new angle, getting yourself off the tracks, getting your foot outside and confusing your opponent. What I love about the switch is disguising techniques. Hiding switch kicks. Switching of directions there and landing that kick. Hiding takedowns. Look at that beautiful takedown by TJ. I like to have four, five, six, seven different finishes to the same switch. Dillashaw looking to finish his fight! One of my favorite combos I've hit in a fight is when I knocked out Joe Soto. Here we go! I hit a combo, ripped the liver, which is a body shot, and as I did that, I got outside of his power, switching my stance, and then right back on him from the southpaw stance, cross, hook, cross, and after that cross, I stepped forward again into my orthodox stance, and I was able to cut him off with my power right head kick to finish the fight. Setting up this combination, and there, boom, there's the head kick. Beautiful job by TJ Dillashaw. Next up is the right hook because MMA is so much of a further distance than boxing. My right hook comes more from a longer range kickboxing style. Power from my right hook comes from rotation and core strength. 
I bring that rear hip, and as it lands, I want to follow all the way through. I like to get my head off the tracks, off the center line. I like to have my foot outside most of the time. But if I could be hitting a drag step where I'm coming inside his stance, I can even hit like a split step where I step my front foot back as I'm hitting my right hook. So different times in different foot placement for every situation. A great setup to throw your right hook, no matter the stance you're in, is throwing a lot of straight punches. Get them to start thinking you're punching down the middle and then reach around to come around the corner. Oh, beautiful right hook there. Throwing that right hook and looking for the finish, you gotta go for the chin. Hit them on the button right in the end of the chin. Get that whiplash in their neck and shut the lights out. The Cody Garbrandt fight, when I finished him in Madison Square Garden, Garbrandt was coming at me. I'd step off to my left, kept my left hand high, because I knew he was going to throw the right hand at the same time, and beat him to the punch at a better angle. His eyes roll back in the back of his head as soon as I landed it, be on the button. Fancy footwork and a lead right hook. Finally, the left head kick. I like to throw my left kick so often because I'm so accurate with it, and it lands. Head kick landed flush. When you got a weapon that's working, you keep using it. TJ throwing a lot of kicks. I can do it from my orthodox stance, and it's a switch head kick. Oh, we caught him with a head kick! I can do it from southpaw, where it's more my power. Mixing it up, southpaw and orthodox. Having more than one way to set it up is the way you're going to get good at a left head kick. Wow! Range is very important in being in that sweet spot. If I'm fighting an orthodox fighter, I need to make sure I'm stepping off to my right. Generates more power into my kick, opens my hips up even more. And then when I lean, I'm out of the way of any kind of offense he has, and I'm stepping further away. I'm getting him to follow me down to his left. He brings his hands down, brings his eyes away from the target, sets up that win. He's doing a great job of fainting, disguising his movement. Fights like Issy Tamora that I knocked him out cold with my left kick. Look how he's looking down, look down, kick high. Hugo Viana, I clipped a left head kick to be able to finish him with the right hand. Caught him with the right hand. He caught him with a kick just before that. Great diversion for uh, hitting your left head kick is getting someone comfortable with your jab. Throw my jab, let him parry it. Then I'm going to use that to my advantage. Next time, I'll move my jab a little bit lower, like I'm jabbing his chest. Now as he goes to parry that jab, his hand comes down even lower. And now it gives me that split second to hit my switch left kick kick at the same time. The fight where I best utilize my left kick would probably be against Hinnom Barrow, the first fight. For the UFC Bantamweight Championship. I landed it so many times. Kick over the top, and another one behind it. Again, I use my hands as the diversion to get his hands away from his face, and use it for follow up with that left head kick. Oh! He tagged him again! It was there all night. It was one of those tools I just kept using because I kept landing it. There's the kick again! I'll always remember the Hinnom Barrow fight because that's what won me that world title, put my name on the map. Looking for the finish! It is all over! TJ Dillashaw! I'm TJ Dillashaw, and that was my signature series. After breaking into the top 10 at UFC 272, Arkansas native Bryce Mitchell announced his next goal. And it didn't involve an opponent, a title shot, or even his signature camouflage shorts. Thug Nasty vowed to give back to his community by donating his purse to children with medical needs. Bryce personally delivered the good news to a clinic in Augusta, Arkansas, and Ultimate Access tagged along. I really do think that the biggest thing I'm going to do overall is help change the narrative of what is expected of an athlete. Because I have the freedom to pursue a life that to me is worth living. Because of everybody in the community who's helped me over the years, I'm inspired to want to give back to that community. 
In MMA, you see a lot of people that are giving back and helping their communities. Because of his philanthropic efforts, I want to present to you, Dustin, a key to the city. Dustin Poirier, Max Holloway, Giga Chikadze. I want that to be the norm. And I wanted to just continue that tradition there. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Bryce Thug Nasty Mitchell, a proud fighter from Arkansas, has certainly caught the attention of the MMA world and beyond. Man, this kid is like no other guy. There's just something about him. Of course, the guy can fight. Oh, big left from Thug Nasty. But on the floor, he's absolutely tremendous. Set up a twister. No way. That's tight. Oh, oh my God. Oh, Bryce Mitchell. Thug Nasty. I mean, Bryce Mitchell once again goes out there, establishes his dominance. The man's for real. Oh, yeah, he's just beating him up. After I fought Edson, I did the coolest thing I've ever done. Joe interviewed me. I knew what I wanted to say. Half of my fight purse, $45,000, is going to Arkansas children with medical conditions who have no hope. We will be their hope. Bryce Mitchell, and he said, you know, his charitable gift that he was going to give, you said, don't give it, I'll cover it. So I'm just curious kind of what your motivation was. I respect that, and he said, we'll do it. We'll take care of it. I'm not only appreciative of what Dana did, I'm excited. I wanted the money to go towards kids' medical costs. Our care is Arkansas's largest primary care network. We're humbled and grateful that he would consider us as a philanthropic partner. What's up? Hey, Will. Thank you for having us. Shortly after Bryce made his announcement, it became public that Dana White and the UFC were going to make that donation on his behalf. Um, I think that's awesome. I think it shows respect of the organization to its fighters. As Bryce looks to the future and hopefully continues climbing the ranks and develops more and more notoriety and more and more fans, I hope that people see his willingness to give. What I would like to announce is that I'm giving um, an additional $45,000. That'll be my personal contribution to your charity. It'll be in addition to Dana White's $45,000. So now we have raised $90,000 for this community, for the children of God. And I got you a check, brother. That's all. Awesome. Thank you, brother. The easy thing to do is to accept the check, right? But we didn't want to just be that. We wanted to be a partner through this. We wanted to deploy those dollars in a way that, that, that met with his vision for how his contribution would, would help folks. The first thing he said was, I want to help people with medical needs. Hey! We've been able to peel back the onion and talk about how it's more than just a doctor's visit. There's food insecurity and substance abuse issues, all things that our care and through its foundation are actively working to help people with. Oh, yes. oh. When the UFC made their contribution, they also sent us these, uh, the UFC bleacher creatures. And so it's the, it's the, the who's who of UFC fighters and we need Thug Nasty and Camo Shorts. Thug Nasty and Camo Shorts. We will see a direct impact on people's lives because of the generosity of people like Bryce. Bye bye. Bye bye bye. bye. I tremendously respect the fact that someone's developed a degree of fame and notoriety and they want to use that and their primary goal to use that is to give back to their community. I think it's something for us all to learn through that. I believe when I'm done fighting, people will more talk about the charity than they will the fights. Just knowing that uh, I'm giving back to that organization, I mean, that's the greatest thing I've ever done in my life. And to be a part of something like that, it's really just amazing. And so it's going to keep happening. There's nothing that I've done that I've ever felt more proud of. for now but we will see you next time right here on UFC Connected. Thanks so much for watching.